Slow death. Yes, but what a way to go. Straight sauerkraut juice. How do you do it? Very bracing. You must try it sometime. How's the wheat germ? Sounds good. Superb. Well, that must be the mailman. No, I'll get it. I'm expecting a journal of the American Etymological Society. Postcard from your vacationing parents. Hey, Venice, very pretty. Nothing from Eddie? Eddie? Who's Eddie? You know very well who Eddie is. Eddie Prentice, one of your brightest pupils last term. Prentice? Prentice? The boy who won a fellowship and went on an archaeological expedition to you. Ukraine. Uh, Ukrainistan? Yes, that is from Eddie. <laughs> Only teasing you, darling. Oh, look, a present. It's a charm bracelet. Mm, it was very pretty. What does Prentice have to say? Just a lot of personal stuff, you know. I know. But he says he'll be home soon. They found the ruins they were looking for. Mmm, excellent. In fact, the charm on the bracelet is some ancient coin he found in a temple they uncovered there. It was attached to the right hand of a gigantic stone idol, he says. It's a relic from some ancient civilization. Isn't that exciting? Mm. Mm.
church. Shash. Joan! Good morning, Kilgore. You almost uh, ran me down. Oh, I'm very sorry, but I didn't, did I? No, but you uh, came awfully close. Please accept my apologies, old man. Shash? Shash. Uh, what'd you say? What? Say? Oh, nothing, Kilgore, nothing. Well, it sounded like you said shash, shash. Oh, yes, I did, quite right, yes. Shash, shash. Morning, Kilgore. Morning, Jones. Good morning. Good morning. Yesterday, we considered the transmutation of certain words from the Assyrio Babylonic. And we noted that the Assyrio-Babylonic word for house, bitu, appears in the classical Hebrew as, as what, Mr. Crane? Uh, bait. Well, almost right, Mr. Crane, thank you. The correct pronunciation is bayeth. And who can tell us what form the word takes in Aramaic? Yes, Miss Blakiston? Baita. Quite right, Miss Blakiston, thank you. You could build a tremendous edifice of error based on the fact that the Hebrew and Sanskrit words for six are almost identical, although wholly unrelated. They are, if I may remind you, shesh and shash. Shesh? Shesh. Yes, sir. Right in the middle of the campus this morning. Shesh, shash. Professor Kilgore, I don't think we need bother ourselves. Professor Jones is a very brilliant man in the field of ancient Eastern languages. As you are brilliant in the field of modern European languages. I think we can allow him a few little peculiarities. Hmm? Sir, I'm sure that Professor Jones is excellent in the classroom. Well, then. But his executive ability. Could Saracen Valley have, have a dean of language who goes around muttering, shash, shash? Well, I haven't retired yet, Professor, nor have I named my successor. It's still a choice between you and Professor Jones. Then you haven't decided yet? Not yet. Then you'll take this uh, shash shash matter under uh, consideration? Oh, I will, I will. Thank you, Professor. Good morning. <laughs> Good morning, Dean. Good morning. Shash shash. <laughs> Jonathan? Yes. How was your day? Oh, fine. What's for dinner? Filet of eggplant? Filet of eggplant. Medium rare? Of course. Ah. Mmm. <laughs> oh, uh, pass the monosodium glutamate, please. Thank you. So, you know, dear, he really shouldn't have sent this to you. That's rightfully the property of why it's Astiparian. Asti what? Hey, that's mine. Yes, yes, I know, but if you don't... It's from Maddie. It's like a fraternity pin or, or an engagement ring. But you don't understand, darling. That inscription is in the ancient Astiparian language. Am I supposed to know what that is? It's a language that's been dead for over 5,000 years. Why, there are only 10 men in the world who can identify it, much less translate it, and I can. But... Now, look, dear. Maybe this inscription is an ancient love poem. Something Eddie would want you to hear, hmm? Well... Oh, yes, of course. Uh... First, graspeth thou the sacred disc in thy left hand. Hand. Now cometh the letting of... Letting of...
sacred name of the great god Zox. Please go. Like this? Well, you can't stay here. I have to. You could, no, it's no, the no. most amazing thing that's ever happened to me. I'm not going to embarrass you by asking you how you got into this condition. After all, I'm a man of the world. I was struck I... by lightning. You were what? Well, I was hurrying along trying to beat out this sudden storm when... Well, I think I was struck by lightning. Hmm. I have heard of cases where people were struck by lightning and had their clothes torn off without hurting them. Usually, these people were branded by the mark of the bolt. I seem to be all right. Oh, I'm glad to hear it. But you can't stay here. I mean, I'm a bachelor. I don't have a wife. I'm not married. Well, what can I do? Do? What, what, what can you do? I, uh, my niece. I'll wake her up. Uh, no, she might think. I mean, not that she'd have any real, I mean, I, I'll go upstairs and get some of her clothes. They'll probably fit. I think you're about the same size. Anyway, you, you wait right here. Oh, I will. I will. It's, uh, it's all right, dear. Go back to sleep. What? Uh, nothing. Just, just, uh, it's all right. Go. There. Now, please go. Well, can I put them on first? Oh, oh yes, of course. I'll, uh, turn my back. Thanks. You haven't asked me my name. No, I haven't. I thought it was better that way. I agree. Do they uh, fit? Most of them. The shoes are a little big and the... <laughs> something else is a little small. But I'll get by. What? You oh, can yeah. turn around now. Well, I do. Uh, well, at least you won't be cold. <laughs> I want to thank you, not only for what you did, but for what you're going to do. Going to do? Forget about this. Oh, yeah. oh yes, yes, of course. Oh, I better take this with you. Oh, oh no, it stopped. It has? Why, so it has, Todd. So foul and fair a day I have not seen. That's Shakespeare. Macbeth, act one, I know. You do? Uh-huh. Well. Good night. Uh, good night. Macbeth, act one.
And there are other basic affinities in the languages of this group. For example, in all of them, ancient and modern, masculine nouns take a feminine number and vice versa from three to ten. Who can give us an example of this grammatical idiosyncrasy? Yes, Mr. Crane? Are you all right, Mr. Crane? Would you like to be excused? Uh, no, I, I'm all right now. Uh, uh, must have been something I ate. Uh, an example. Uh, the word for goat, for instance, is uh, masculine, but three goats is feminine. Oh, very good, Mr. Crane. That's quite right. And now, who can tell us in what parts of the modern world the Turkish language is spoken? Yes, Miss Blakiston. <laughs> Actually, although it's not generally known, Admanli is the head of a large family of tongues. The Turkish language in its several dialects is spoken from central Persia to... Is something wrong, Professor Jones? A uh, wrong? Oh, uh, no, no, Miss Blakiston. From central Persia to Siberia. Dialects sometimes differ greatly. For example... Uh, that's fine, Miss Blakiston. Thank you. But I haven't finished. Class dismiss. Thus is gained the ancient threefold power, the first part of which is that of the pointing finger, known as the power of the sudden pain. of which is that of the pointing finger and the uttered name together. Oh. Zas! A silent death. He who holdeth the sacred disk shall be imbued with this dreaded threefold power only so long as it remains in his possession. And should it pass into the hands of another, that other will hold the power for a short time only. Hmm.
Zatz. <laughs> Good afternoon, Jones. Uh, hello, Kilgore. Uh, what have you got there? It looks like a lizard. Lizard? Where? Oh, th oh, this lizard. Yeah. Oh, yes. Yes, a remarkable example of saurian life. Yes, direct descendant of the dinosaur. Is that so? I didn't know you were interested in that sort of thing. Oh, yes, yes, indeed. Fascinating subject. Mm. <laughs> you don't say. Oh, incidentally, Jones, uh, I suppose you met our new colleague, Professor Fenster? No, I haven't. What's Professor Fenster's field? Modern European languages, or so I'm told. Why, that's your field. <laughs> yes, it is. One might almost think they're considering, uh, what do you call it, kicking me upstairs. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, or downstairs. Uh, yes, well, uh, toodaloo, Jones. Have fun with your dinosaur. <laughs> toodaloo. Extraordinary. Za. Uh. Uh. Professor Jones, are you feeding all right? Yes, sir. Never better. Yes. Uh, I understand you dismissed your class early today. Why, uh, yes, yes, I, I gave them a heavy assignment for the weekend. I thought I'd better let them get to the library before it closed. Yeah. Well, the library is open until 8 o'clock tonight. It, oh, yes, so it is, yes. Hard to keep up with these uh, new rules. Uh, well, that rule's been in effect ever since um, 1918, but no matter. I'm glad I ran across you. I want to invite you for cocktails this evening in my lodgings. How nice. I want you and the other members of the faculty to meet a new colleague. Oh, Professor Fenster? Oh, well, then you've met. Uh, no, no. Oh, well, then in that case, may we expect you at six? Oh, yes, yes, indeed, yes, sir. Excellent, splendid. Uh, oh, and Professor. Yes, Dean? Uh, don't work too hard. that cocktail party at six. Yeah, would you get me that package on my bureau, darling? Mm. What's in it? Oh, uh, just some things I bought downtown. Thank you. I won't be here when you get back, so don't wait up. You have a date? Uh-huh, Jimmy. Jimmy who? Jimmy Kilgore. Well, he's not much, but he'll do till Eddie gets home. Jimmy Kilgore? Horatio Kilgore's boy? Yes. Well, it's not serious or anything like that. It's just a date, not a date date. But Kelgore, son. Oh, Jimmy's all right. Kind of a wolf, but I can handle him. Zuts. Zuts. Zuts.
Plenty of babies. Well, uh, are you all ready to go? Anytime you are. Okay. Professor Jones, how nice of you to come. Will you have a martini? Oh, no, thank you, sir. Uh, I don't suppose you have any sauerkraut juice? Uh, well, why, no, I don't, I don't think. Uh, my Persephone? Uh, yes? Uh, do we happen to have any sauerkraut juice? Sauerkraut juice? I don't think so. Oh, uh, perhaps we could get you a soft drink, Professor. That would be fine, Mrs. Updike. Take Hercules for a moment, please, yes, Joshua. And get rid of that pipe. You know it makes Hercules ill. There we are. Thank you, Mrs. Updike. Get rid of that pipe. Uh, yes, thanks. Will you take Hercules? Thank you so much. Professor, if you only knew how much the dean and I admire your abstinence from strong drink, your sensible diet, your devotion to exercise, as the ancient said, Mensana in capare sana. Oh, yes, indeed. I think of you as one of the great and classic educators of yore. Plato, Aristotle, in flowing robes, stately, sober, dignified. <laughs> Roaming the groves of Akadem, dispensing wisdom and knowledge. And now? Please come and meet the new member of our faculty. <laughs> <laughs> Professor Fenster, I'd like you to meet Professor Jonathan Jones, Ancient Eastern Languages. Very glad to meet you, Professor Jones. I, 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 oh, charmed. Uh, Joshua, yes, please take Hercules. Yes, pleasure. There we are. Now you'll excuse me, please. Oh, certainly. Yes. Uh, <laughs> By George, it's a beautiful cat. Yes, isn't it? <clears throat> he loves strangers. Would you, would you like to hold him? <laughs> oh, Dean. Let me get this straight. You are Professor Fenster? Well, my friends call me Virginia. And to think you're the famous Jonathan Jones. Oh, well, not so famous. Not so famous? Why, everybody in the field is familiar with your doctorate thesis on the transmutation of the Latin F to B in Teutonic languages. Well, um, that was quite a while ago. And I simply devoured your latest book. Really? The Semantics of Dionysus of Halicarnassensis? Yes, I could hardly put it down. Well, I... But I thought your, your field was modern languages, like uh, Professor Kelgore's. Oh, well, it is. Oh? But I've also studied ancient Eastern languages. Like me? Like you. I see. Very interesting. Uh, tell me, of these two specialties, Professor Fenster... Virginia. Virginia. Of these two specialties, Virginia, which will you utilize here? Well, I wish I knew. The dean told me I was to prepare myself for either course. He said he has a, an important decision to make. But really, Professor Jones... Jonathan. <laughs> Jonathan. Really, uh, I think it's so fascinating to meet the author of those wonderful books. You can teach me so much. I warn you, you're going to see a lot of me. Yes, well, um, I've already seen a lot of you, Virginia. You were going to forget all about that, remember? Oh, forgive me. I stand corrected. And those charming translations of the French Fabio were yours? Yes, I loved doing them. I loved reading them. Been uh, hunting any dinosaurs lately, Jones? Not lately. <laughs> <laughs> what on earth did he mean by that? I haven't the faintest idea.
What's she hanging around there for? What a coot. Shh, if... quiet. You wouldn't be afraid to be in that house alone with old Jim here, would you? Jimmy, you promised. Oh, come on. Jimmy, stop it. Oh, well, you're safe with me. That's what you said. What's the matter? I don't know. I'm OK now, though. Are you sure? Let's just watch the movie, huh? Gladly. At Harvard, I was a history major, actually. Then I narrowed my specialty to the Asianic cultures. Under Professor Sandor? Yes, a wonderful old man. He stimulated my interest in ancient languages. Sanskrit, Hebrew, Astaparian. Astaparian, that reminds me. Excuse me for a moment. I must speak to the dean on an important matter. Sir. Oh, hello, my boy. How are you going to get along with Professor Fenster? Fine, sir. Splendid. Most talented young lady. Yes, she is, but I have something I want to discuss with you. Oh, very well. Yes, I had to tell someone. It's so important, and, well, you're the only one to whom I could turn. <laughs> By all means, my boy. Well, sir, it's this power I have. Power? Uh? Yes, sir, the power to disable, even to kill. Kill? I know it sounds fantastic, and it's going to be very hard for you to believe, but... I really don't know where to begin. May I make a suggestion? Please do. Begin at the beginning. Go on until you come to the end, then stop. No, I think it would be better if I begin at the end and work back. In fact, that's why I brought these along. Eh? I knew I would have a hard time convincing you without proof, so on the way over, I stopped in at a pet shop. Great Scott, Jones, look. Those are mice, aren't they? Just white mice, sir. But uh, I, they're absolutely essential to my demonstration, sir. What demonstration? A demonstration of the power of zots. Zots? Yes, sir. Zots. And if you will allow me... Well, I most certainly will not allow you. Do you, do you tell me that you intend to let these creatures out here? Yes, sir. Do, have you taken leave of your senses? Trust me, sir. Within one split second after those mice are released, they will be motionless, harmless, lifeless. Zots! 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 Ellen May, what a lovely cake. It's beautiful. I just can't wait to taste it. I said Zots! Z-O-T-Z! Zots! Jones, come up. Why have you done this? I don't understand. It worked before. I simply pointed while the coin was in my pocket. What coin? This one. The coin that I... I'm sure I have it. Oh, no. Cynthia! She must have taken it. What about Cynthia? Well, this is terrible. She's going out tonight. She doesn't know the power she possesses. Jones, I... Excuse me, sir. I must stop her. I demand... <laughs> Thank you. 
Check. Cynthia? 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 Oh, hello, Virginia. Jonathan, is something wrong? Yes, something is terribly wrong. Well, what is it? Can I help? No, nobody can help. Wait a minute. Have you got your car? Yes. What are we waiting for? Let's go. Where to? I don't know. First Street, I guess. And keep your eye peeled for a hot rod containing a very pretty girl and the son of Horatio Kelgore. What is this all about? Well, there's this little... You wouldn't believe it. You wouldn't believe it. Say, I know a cozy little spot where uh, we could... Just a soda, please. Just a soda. Yeah, I get the message, John. Uh... There they are. Where do you want to go? How about the sip and dip? See, the sip and dip, that's uh, north of here, isn't it? No, it's south. <laughs> Cynthia, come home at once. What? Come home at once. Never mind. Stay right there. I'll get you. <laughs> it's all right. Oh, don't come along with me. But Uncle Jonathan... No arguments. Oh, we were only going over Shut! to... Shut! Excuse me. Don't do that. Why? Because it's not polite to point. Huh? Come along, darling. You better let me have this, too. And after all that, he says it's not polite to point. Th that's all? That's all. What a kook. Yeah, very interesting. Well, <laughs> thank you, my boy. Run along to bed. Okay. Good night, Dad. Good night. Good morning, darling. Good morning. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Poison. Slow death. Uncle Jonathan? Ah, uh, yes? All that stuff you said last night about the coin. What were you drinking at the Dean's party? Soda pop, of course. What are you implying? Well, it's all a little hard to swallow, you know. That stuff about ancient magic and the pointing finger and... What was that word again? Never mind. Feeling all right? Of course I have. I'm in the pink of condition. Well, then why do you have an appointment with the doctor this morning? Doctor? I have no appointment with the doctor. Yes, you do. At 9 o'clock. Miss Carruthers at the medical staff phoned to remind you when you were in the shower. She said the dean made the appointment. Oh, really? That's odd. Oh, it must be the annual physical checkup. Good idea, actually. Men sarna in corpore sarno, you know. What? Sound mind and a sound body. It's 9 o'clock, you said. I better be on my way. Bye, darling. Bye. Hey, good morning. I'm Professor Jones. Oh, good morning, Professor. You can go right in. Dr. Croner's expecting you. Thank you. 
Morning, Dr. Croner. Pleasure to meet you. I'm Jones, ancient Easter languages. Sit down, Professor. That's a very sensible thing, checkups. As I was saying to my niece only this morning, men sana in corpore sano. <laughs> Quite. <clears throat> I think you'll find me in top condition. Exercise, a sensible diet, don't drink, don't smoke. Professor Jones, I think and perhaps... These are uh, my own. Every single one. Hearing perfect. Vision, 2020. Blood pressure? Sir. Seven, yes? Uh, please put your clothes back on and then make yourself comfortable on the couch. Put my clothes... Put, put, put them back on? Oh, very well, if you wish. I simply thought that I... I, I couch? Yes, just uh, lie down and relax. You mean you're that kind of a doctor? <laughs> now, don't worry about a thing, Professor. The dean sent me to you? He thinks I'm crazy? No, 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 no. Crazy's an unfortunate word, don't you agree? I certainly do. And if you think I'm going to submit to an examination by you a man... You always react so violently. Violently? Why, no, not at all. In fact, I'm a quiet man. Studious. Oh, I see. Uh, quiet and studious sometimes, and violent at other times. Almost like uh, two different people, hmm? Now, look here. If you're trying to say I'm schizophrenic... Oh, do you feel that I'm persecuting you? No! It all began when my niece received a charm bracelet. Oh, Professor Kelgore. Professor Fenster. Do you know where I might find Professor Jones this morning? I have a little translation problem I'd like to discuss with him. Uh, Jones, Jones. No, I haven't seen him since the cocktail party yesterday evening. <laughs> Behaved very peculiarly, didn't he? Um, perhaps I can help? Well, I'm afraid it's in the field of ancient languages, Professor Kelgore. Uh, call me Horatio. Well, I must run. Thanks, anyway. Please continue, Professor. That's all there is to tell. Yes. Now, if I understand you correctly, you say that you're actually able to destroy living creatures by pointing your finger at them and speaking this word, zatz. Yes, but only if the coin is on my person. Don't you see that all this is mere delusion? Delusion? Why, I've seen it with my own eyes. A line of people on the sidewalk, mown down as if by a machine gun. Hallucination. It was not hallucination. And there was the moth, and, and the cat, and the ships, and the squirrel, and, and the dinosaur. The dinosaur, Professor? I, I mean the lizard. Just a, a little lizard, you know. Yes, yes, of course. It was a baby dinosaur, wasn't it? Yeah, it was... No, no, no. Professor Jones, you're an intelligent man, and I won't try to humor you, but surely you can understand that these delusions of yours are merely a result of your repressed hostility, your, your aggressive feelings towards society. I have no aggressive feelings towards society, Dr. Croner. I must confess, at this moment, however, I have aggressive feelings toward you. Well, <laughs> that's a perfectly normal reaction. As a matter of fact, you're a classic case. I will not be referred to as a classic case. Sir, this power of yours does not exist. It does exist. Then show me. What? Show me. Convince me. Demonstrate this horrible force, this power you have over life and death. Very well. Well, what shall I demonstrate it on? Me. Well, I couldn't do that. Why not? Well, it would cause you pain. Well, now, why should that concern you? You've already said that you have aggressive feelings toward me. Here's your chance to unleash them. Oh, I can't. Of course you can't, because his power is not real. It is. It's imaginary. It's not. Not what? Not real. I mean, imaginary. <laughs> there, you see? You can't distinguish between reality and imagination. I'm sorry, Doctor, but there's no other way. <laughs> you put on a good act, Professor. Remember, you brought this on yourself. <laughs> Go ahead. Take out your hostility on me. It will do you a world of good. <laughs> <laughs> <clears throat> I was doubled over like this. It was very painful. Perhaps he hypnotized you. Well, I know a bit more about hypnosis than you do, Dean. And I can assure you I was not hypnotized. Then how do you explain it? Very simple. 
Appendicitis. I shall enter the hospital the first thing in the morning. No, no, of course not, my boy. It's simply that I think you need a rest. Sir, I'm in perfect health. Uh, go away for a few days. Uh, a week, please, sir, if you'd only listen to me. Go someplace, relax. Uh, take a trip. A trip? A trip. Well, I think you better try Lieutenant Stefanski, sir. He may be able to help you. You don't understand. I don't want him to help me. I want to help him. Uh, yes, sir, but you better see the lieutenant anyway. You'll find him in 3C-4L-3-S-19. 3C? It's very simple, sir. You see, this building has five sides, A, B, C, D, and E. Now, 3C means the third floor of side C. That way. That way. The next number tells you what corridor to take. Four. That's right over there. Over there. The second three means the third court. Then S-19 is the 19th stanchion on your left. You can't miss it, sir. Thank you. Uh, what was that floor again? Third floor, sir. Third floor. Uh, you see, Lieutenant Stefanski, they sent me in to see you about the... Professor Jones, I'm afraid the Army isn't interested. There are many such suggestions that come across my desk every day, and we are not interested. Are you listening to me? Oh. 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 Oh, now be reasonable, Henry. I handled the last one. That screwball with a steam operated machine gun. It's your turn now. What do you mean, you've got a stomachache? What about Lieutenant Stefanski? Captain Byron? Major Folger? They've all got stomach aches. I tell you, it's that lousy food they serve in the cafeteria. All right. All right, send him over. Yes? General Bulliver? Yes? There's a Professor Jones who wishes to see you. I know, I know. Tell him to wheel it in. Wheel what in, sir? A death ray or whatever it is he thinks he's invented. He doesn't have anything with him, sir. Not even a briefcase. Oh, one of those quiet ones, huh? Well, I guess there's no use delaying it. Send him in. Yes, sir. Professor Jones, sir. Ah. <laughs> Hello there. How are you? So you're the fellow that's come all the way from California just to talk to us. Yes, sir. I'm delighted to meet you, Professor. Thank sit you, Sit down, sit down. Make yourself comfortable. Well, thank you very much. <clears throat> well, did you have a pleasant trip? Uh, most pleasant, thanks. And how are you enjoying your visit to the Capitol? Well, I only arrived now, this morning. Take my advice. Don't miss the Lincoln Memorial. It's a very moving experience. It brings tears to my eyes every time I see it. Well, I'm sure it's most Have impressive. Have a cigar. What? No, thank you. I... Do you mind if I get right to the point? Oh, yes, of course. The Colonel mentioned something about a new weapon. Well, it's not exactly a weapon. Oh? Huh? Well, what is it? A gun? A bomb? Would you be interested in a method to immobilize, even destroy, as you choose, every living thing within range of vision, ships, tanks, planes? How do you intend to go about this, sir? Light rays, uh, sound vibrations, black magic? Yes. Yes, what? Black magic. You see, I'm a human weapon. Now, look, Professor, I do not have the time to stand around making jokes. I'm not joking, I assure you. A human weapon? Are you serious? I've never been more serious in my life. <laughs> you see? Ah, <laughs> I see, I see. You're some sort of a magician, huh? <laughs> what? 
Look, I'm afraid they've sent you to the wrong department. Now, what you want is the entertainment division of special services. I'll make one little phone call and settle this whole thing for you. No. Wait. Wait. Now, get me, Colonel. General, lab. I can prove it. Never mind. All right. Prove it. Excuse me. Look, that airplane up there. Uh-huh. Now watch this. Watch it. You see? Wonderful. Marvelous. Now, watch this. And the secret lies in this ancient coin. In that coin? Well, well, well. And you see, this makes it possible to... You know, this is a marvelous little invention you have here, Professor. Well, it's not exactly I'll an invention. I'll tell you what I'm going to do. I'm going to have my secretary help you fill out form number W5A16 in quadruplicate. But, sir... This will be filed and duly considered at the next meeting of the Chiefs of Staff. How long before I hear from you? Well, the next meeting is sometime in December. December? Yes, yes. Of course, anything suggested at that meeting will have to be forwarded on to higher echelons. But this power of mine is well, immediate. Of course, I, I believe that if you leave your name and address, you can expect to receive some sort of communication from us uh, after the first of the year. What sort of communication? Well, now... Nah. General, don't you think the state of world conditions today demands that I you take that immediate... I think you're absolutely right, and we are wasting time standing here talking about it. Yes, we are. I'm glad that we see eye to eye. And I will start the wheels in motion right now. Hey, Corporal, I want you to drop everything and help Professor Jones here fill out form W5A16. Thank you, uh, Professor. Sir, no, sir. Uh, General. Please sit down, Professor. This may take a while. Well, thanks, but uh, don't bother. But what about form W5A16? You tell the General that he can. Oh, never mind. I, uh, I beg your pardon. Don't I know you? No, I don't believe so. My name is Hugh Fundy. Uh, what is that, may I ask? This? This is a death ray. Oh. Well, good luck. <laughs> oh. expect you home tonight? Well, I decided to cut my trip short. Hey, you're all dressed up. How come? Well, the farewell dinner for the dean. You remember. Gee, it's nice you returned in time for it. Yeah, I'd better change. I won't be five minutes. Well, I'll meet you at the country club. Can't you wait while I change? Well, gee, Uncle Jonathan, I expected you to be out of town tonight. And I told Jimmy I'd go with him. And there he is. Bye. See you at the club. There's sauerkraut juice in the fridge. I'm coming! Virginia. Hello? Oh, hello. Virginia? Jonathan. Oh, Jonathan, you're back. So soon? Yeah, I got homesick, I guess. Say, the reason I'm calling, I, I thought I might escort you to the farewell dinner tonight. Well, I'm awfully sorry, but I, I was sure you'd be away, and I... Well, I accepted an invitation to go with Horatio. Horatio? Kel Gore? Well, yes, you see... Oh, I'm sorry. Now, please try to understand. Oh, I understand. I understand perfectly. Oh, Jonathan. Bye. Well, 
Here we are. Uh, Dean Updike, of course, and Mrs. Updike, uh, Professor Adams, Drinkle, and uh, Virginia, I want you to sit there, and of course, I shall occupy the speaker's chair. Is everything satisfactory, Professor Kelgore? Oh, yes, yes, it seems to be. Of course, this is a very special occasion. You understand, I want everything exactly right. I've made myself personally responsible. Of course. Uh, perhaps I may have the waiter bring you a cocktail before the others arrive? Uh, no, no, it might relax me too much. have to make a speech right after dinner. <laughs> yes. Good evening. Hi, Dad. Hello, Professor Finster. Hello, Jimmy. Hello, Cynthia. Uh, just in time, James. Good evening, Cynthia. I'm so sorry your uncle won't be able to make it tonight. Better check the wine. Oh, but he's back. I told him to meet us here. I know, dear, but when I talked to him on the phone just now, he said he was too exhausted from his trip and he wouldn't come. Uh, Virginia, would you check the guest list? It's a good thing if you ask me. What do you mean? Well, we all want everything to be nice for the Dean's farewell dinner, don't we? Are you implying that my Uncle Jonathan... Look, uh, don't get bent out of shape. Your uncle's okay, I guess. But everybody knows he's a little bit kooks. Kooks? Yeah, well, um, like that night he chased us in Professor Finster's car. And, well, you heard about those mice, didn't you? Jimmy Kilgore, if you... Oh, forget it. Let's sit down, huh? James. Uh, yeah, Dad? Would you come in? Excuse me. Yeah, Dad? <laughs> now, James, I want to caution you about the way you'll behave tonight. No raucousness or ungentlemanly behavior. Oh, sure, Dad. Because this is a very important evening, understand? The dean still hasn't named a successor, and his decision could stand or fall on the impression that I create at the dinner. <laughs> understand? I dig. <laughs> Don't speak English. Good evening, my dear Dean. Professor. Good evening, uh, Mrs. Updike. May I say that you look dangerously lovely this evening? <laughs> Professor Kilgar, you say the most awful things. <laughs> it was very nice of it to preside tonight, Kilgar. Well, when I heard that Professor Jones would be absent, I felt that someone had to take things in hand. Uh, quite so, poor Jones. Excellent man, really, but... I'm sorry, my dear. I didn't mean to. That's all right, sir. Uh, shall we sit down? The others should be along presently. Uh, Dean, the chair of honor, of course. Uh, yeah, get out of the way, will you? Uh, Mrs. Updike, uh, will you grace our table with your radiance? Charm. <laughs> when in disgrace with fortune and men's eyes, I all alone beweep my outcast state, here's how. And trouble deaf heaven with my bootless cries, and look upon myself and curse my fate. Oh. And speaking of our beloved Dean's regretted departure from our midst, I would like to borrow an aphorism from the works of the great La Rochefoucauld, the Hello, everybody. Well, Sorry I'm late. Accept my apologies, Horatio. Yes, yes, it's uh, good to see you, Jones. Most unexpected. Did you have a nice trip? Fantastic. I hope you didn't miss the Lincoln Memorial, a very moving experience. Brings tears to my eyes every time I see it. <laughs> uh, yeah, well, uh, if you don't mind, just sit down, please. Yeah. Traitor. Jonathan. Don't you... bother to explain. Uh, uh, uh. <laughs> my, uh, my dear friends. Friends. Hmm. My dear and true friends. Although I usually abstain from intoxicating spirits, <laughs> I would on this occasion like to indulge in sort of a token sip of this ceremonial champagne. 
It is indeed fitting that I propose a toast to our beloved Dean and, and put into words the, the true feelings in my heart. Zots. <laughs> exhibition of himself. I know, my dear, but what can I do? Assert yourself. <laughs> I'm sure what my colleague, Professor Kelgor, means to say is something which all of us feel in our hearts but find very difficult to express. Simply, ave atque vale. Hail and farewell. Hail and farewell. Hail and farewell. Hail and farewell. Hail. Thank you, Jonathan. Thank you very much. It's good to have you among us again. And now, for heaven's sake, let's enjoy ourselves. <laughs> <laughs> well, Professor Jones? Yes, I'm Jones. A gentleman to see you, sir. Just inside the main entrance. See me? Yes, sir. Oh, very well. Excuse me. Who is Cooks now? Yes, sir. Thank you. Professor Jones? Yes. Jonathan Jones? That's right. Well, I'm sure glad I was able to find you so quickly. My name is Bates, Josh Bates. What can I do for you, Mr. Bates? Well, it's more a question of what we can do for you. I'm with the government, Professor. Ah. And I've been sent to bring you back to Washington. I see. Well, perhaps first thing tomorrow morning. No, sir. Now. Now? Yes, sir. Nobody knows better than yourself, sir, how important this matter is. Yes, but and I... how timely. Well, that's true. However, my friends and family in there... And how secret, Professor. Why, if you were to tell them that you were flying back to Washington tonight, word might leak out. Uh, you have a point, Mr. Bates. Still, if I could just have a few seconds with my niece, I... There isn't time, Professor. Please, sir, the plane is waiting. Well, you can phone your niece later. All right, Mr. Bates, let's go. best for you, Professor. <laughs> Very interesting. I, I, I don't know what happened, but I had a uh, feeling like I was floating. <laughs> Cynthia, where's your uncle? I don't know. I must get a check, though. You know, I mean, <laughs> I'm sick, I think, really. Excuse me. Where are you going, Professor? Thank you. 
Mr. Bates. Yes? You are, you said, with the government? That's right, Professor. <laughs> what government? You will learn the answer to that question very soon. I was afraid of that. Oh, you need be afraid of nothing, Professor. You are to be our honored guest. But not in Washington. Not, as you say, in Washington. But this is preposterous. Why are your people interested in me? Something about an ancient coin. What coin? The one with the secrets. What secrets? <laughs> I neither know nor care. Atomic secrets, I suppose, uh, hidden inside it or something of that nature. I will relieve you of that object. <laughs> certain precautions. What kind of precautions? I will tell you. I see. That's right, Professor. If anything happens to me or to this plane, my comrade Igor has orders. I understand. That is good. When we reach our destination, you will reveal to us the secrets of this coin. Until that time, I will take charge of it. What? The coin. Oh, oh, yes, the coin. Give it to me. You don't think I carry a thing like that around with me, do you? What? It's in a hiding place back in Saracen Valley. Back in... You'll have to turn the plane around. I, I don't know if we can... Покажите мне карту. It will be dangerous for us to return. Dangerous for your niece and Professor Fenster, since we are expected at our destination at a specified time, and if we do not arrive, certain instructions will be radioed to Igor. Therefore, uh, I assume that you will allow me to search you in order to make absolutely sure that a return is necessary. Hmm. You're right. The coin is not on you. назад. Пожалуйста. Now then, where is this coin? At your home? No. And where? First, you must take me to the place where my niece and Virginia Fencer are being held prisoner. Before I give you anything, I must make sure they're unharmed. Capitalist pig. It is I who make the bargains here, not you. Now, remember this, Bates, or whatever your name is. If those two ladies are hurt, you will have no threat to hold over my head. And you will no longer be able to force me to cooperate with you. Now, where are they? The cellar of an office building in your city. What building? Consolidated building. Then I suggest you instruct your friend to step on the gas. Skarea. Harasha.
thing, Mr. Bates. Yes? I hope you realize that if we don't get there in time, and your friend receives his radio orders to harm those two ladies, there will be absolutely nothing to prevent my using that secret weapon on you again. Do you understand? I understand. Да, я понимаю. Хорошо. Satisfied that the ladies are unharmed? We will go now and get that coin. Yes, I am satisfied the ladies are unharmed. And it is now my pleasure to inform you that you are completely within my power. What? I withheld that power only to save them. The but now. Something about the hands. No. No. know what the secret weapon of yours is or how you operate it. I suppose it's some mechanism concealed in your clothes. But I did observe that in order to activate it, you had to raise your arms. And unless I'm gravely mistaken, I have now rendered you powerless. It's no use, Professor. That tape is very strong. Now, shall we go and get that coin? All right, you win. Very sensible. After you, sir. May I say goodbye to my niece? <laughs> I'm a civilized man. Of course you may. Thank you. Good job. Listen, if you and Virginia make a run for it, they won't follow. They're more interested in me. Get to the police and bring them back. Do as I say. All right, Jones. That's enough. You and I will go for the coin. Igor will remain here with the ladies in the event. Run! Hurry, run! <laughs> It's in my pocket. I've had it all the time. You're lying. Am I? I've searched you. Not well enough. Well, if you really have it, throw it to me. With my hands like this? Uh-uh. If you want it, come and get it. Sats! I want that coin. You'll have to take it. May I remind you that you are now powerless? I want that coin. I'll give you till the count of three. Bates, listen. 
No discussions, please. Just the coin, two. I, I... Three. Zatz! Amazing phenomenon, Bates, isn't it? The silly game, Professor. Give me the coin and no harm will come. No! Professor, don't be ridiculous. You fall. Don't worry about me. You Bates, I warn you. Shh. The slightest noise or vibration. Thank you. 
plans now, Professor Zatz? Uh, the name is Jones, young man. Jonathan Jones. And my plans are to return to Saracen Valley College on the next plane and begin my duties as the uh, new dean of languages. General Bolivar, do you think the coin will be recovered? Well, it's hard to say. Might have floated all the way out into the Pacific, needle in a haystack. However, we're using maximum effort. Radar, sonar, Lauren, submarine, the newest type of magnetic devices. Oh, modern science is a wonderful thing. My personal opinion is that we stand an even chance of regaining the coin for the good of humanity. What do you think, Professor? Well, I agree with the general. I think the chances are excellent that the coin will be found. By General, thanks again for your hospitality. Thank you for overlooking the unfortunate circumstances of our first meeting. <laughs> That's a private joke, gentlemen. Now, ah, congratulations again. I know that you two are going to be very happy. Bye, sir. Come, Mrs. Jones. We have time for just one short visit before we catch the plane. A visit with whom? Someone that we both should meet, I think. Goodbye, sir. Goodbye. Gentlemen. Goodbye, Goodbye, Goodbye General. Bye-bye. Bye. Horatio Kelgore and I see eye to eye. That's all.